Hey everyone, it's Nurse Nikki and it's Women's Health Wednesday again. I'm back with Vera, my vagina, and we're going to talk to you this week about the basics, how to clean and wipe your vagina. Two weeks ago, we talked about yeast. Last week, we talked about VB. We touched on it a little bit, but I wanted to dive in deeper into how we're supposed to maintain something so fragile and so important to our bodies. So, wiping. Let's talk about it. <laughs> Your urethra, which is underneath your clitoris, right underneath here, is super sensitive. It's a sterile place, it's clean. The waste that comes out is your urine. It's not bacterial field, okay? It doesn't have bacteria in it. So we consider it quite clean. We call it sterile. You, when you use the restroom, you're gonna wipe this area just like you would normally, but let's say you have a bowel movement also, okay? The waste that comes out of your anus is bacteria filled. It's filled with a common bacteria called E. coli, okay? So the last thing we want to do is take something that's dirty, your anus, and move it, the substance, the stuff that comes out up here to something clean, okay? So that's why when we wipe, when you use the restroom, when you urinate and have a bowel movement, you're gonna take that piece of toilet paper, you're gonna wipe your urethra and your vagina, and you're gonna move to your anus that way. We call that clean to dirty. And then if you still have, you need to wipe some more, you're gonna fold it. You're not gonna use that same area. You're gonna fold that piece of toilet paper, and then you're gonna wipe again. I like to call this Virginia, Alabama, Florida. This is the way I teach the families that I work with that have new babies because one of the most common ways for a little girl, little baby girl to get a urinary tract infection is from this stuff down here, feces, to get in this area, urethra, so dirty has gotten into the clean, okay? So I teach them Virginia, Alabama, Florida. That means clean the vagina, clean the anus, fold it, all right? Clean the vagina, clean the anus, and fold it, okay? Virginia, Alabama, Florida. So let's take it a step further. How do you wash your vagina, all right? And the simple answer is you don't. <laughs> you don't wash your vagina because remember the vagina is the canal going all the way to your cervix, okay? You don't want to wash that area. You don't want soap to get in there because remember, as we talked about with BV, the vagina is an acidic area, about 3.5 to 4.5 in acidity. Soap is basic. It's about nine to 10. So anytime we put soap in this area, it's going to change the pH. We're going to start to get that fishy odor. We're going to start to get that gray discharge and we're going to get bacterial vaginosis because we've totally changed the good bacteria to bad bacteria. Okay. So when you're cleaning this area, you're going to use your hand and you're going to use water and you're just going to rinse that area out. Now, the only place that you put soap is any area that has hair. If it has hair, it has sweat glands. Sweat glands means that it can cause odor. That's the area you should clean. Now, now we're not talking about using like really rough soaps like Dial and Irish Spring and stuff like that. We're talking about using some mild soaps. I personally like Puracy. Um, they have a great soap. They're based out of Austin, Texas. I like um, some Castile, some good Castile soap. I love Castile soap. That's an awesome um, option. So you can use, I want you to use a good mild soap to clean that area. Now you're like, Nurse Nikki, well, what's the best thing I should use? Should I use this towel? Should I use this towel? Nope, we're not using towels either. And I know this is totally against what everything that you've learned in the past, but you don't use towels to clean your vaginal area. Because think about it, you use a towel to clean your whole body and then you're going to put underarm stuff, ear stuff, all this stuff down in your um, vulva and your vagina. No, ma'am. We're not doing that either. So you're going to use your hand. You're going to put a little soap on your hand or as you're rinsing your body, the soap is going to go over it. Now, a lot of people, we have different frames of thought about, do we cut all this hair? Do we keep all this hair? That's your decision. But know that the more hair that you have, that you could have a little bit more odor because there's more sweat and things like that. Again, the opposite could happen with no hair. Again, you have that friction. You can have more sweat in that area. So that's totally a hygiene practice that you can totally make the decision on. There's no good or bad way to do that, okay? But we do want to make sure the area is clean. <laughs> so again, a mild soap on any area that has hair, 
not using a towel at all, but just really using your hand, okay? Remember, no soap goes into any area that doesn't have hair because that area doesn't have any sweat glands. And you could totally change the um, bacteria, the good floor, and move it to bad floor. Please, please, if you have any questions, please let me know. I hope this was helpful, and I will talk to y'all soon. Bye.